Hello and welcome to Daily News Analysis by Abit Siksha. Today is 6th of February 2023 and this is the list that we will be providing you today. As you can see. Let's begin with the first one. So today is International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation. Now in 2012, the UN General Assembly designated today, that is February 6th, as the International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation. The aim is to amplify and direct the efforts for the elimination of the practice of female genital mutilation. The practice female genital mutilation uh, is a universal problem but primarily, uh, primarily it is concentrated in 30 countries in Africa and the Middle East, also the West Asia. It is recognized internationally as violation of human rights, the health and the integrity of girls and women. So 2023 team has been uh, set as partnership with men and boys to transform social and gender norms to end FGM, also female genital mutilation. Okay, so let's move to the next. The next is from the Assam Tribune, the first page. There are two news here, but we'll begin with the left hand side. That is, India sees six fold jump in voters since 1951. So, the total voters is over 94.5 crore, 50 crore, 94, 94.50 crore, sorry. And out of this total, one third, one third of the total voters, they have chosen not to vote in the last assembly elections, Lok Sabha elections. Okay, so out of 94.50, one third has shied away or did not participate in the voting. Now, there are many reasons to why this one third of population did not vote. And one of the main reason that we can find is one of the main reasons is migration. Migrant workers, as we, as we have understood from the pandemic, a lot of migrants could not go back home uh, due to many reasons. So in the similar way, this migrant workers also whose, whose names are in the electoral rolls of their own states, respective states, they could not go back due to various reasons, particularly financial problems. So they could not go back. So therefore, they have shied away. And to mitigate this problem, the government of India is coming up with this new technology that we have already discussed in the previous news analysis, that is remote voting technology to mitigate the problem of migrant workers so that they can vote from wherever they are in their respective electorals okay on the right hand side we have this picture you can see that is general musharraf parvez musharraf he was a former general of pakistan army and also the former president of pakistan so he had passed away in dubai at the age of 79 and he was going through a problem or a disease called amylo Dosis that is caused by the abnormal protein called amyloid which affects the tissues and organs of the human body so he passed away at the age of 19 at the age of 79 sorry okay he was on a, he was in exile in UAE since 2016 due to pressures political pressures now general musharraf is known for the 1999 kargil war he was the chief architect that of the war, of the war that was held with india and to talk about wars with pakistan there are three wars particularly that we can uh, keep in our minds one is directly after the independence of both countries that lasted till 60s that war and then second one we have the 1971 war of 
Bangladesh, liberation of Bangladesh war. And the third one, the major scale war was 1999 of that war. And the third news we have Y20 that is happening in Guwahati. So the is a meeting of the youth under the umbrella of G20 meeting that is going on in Guwahati. Now there, we have already discussed about Y20 also. Uh, probably in the last week's uh, news analysis you can go through that. There are five themes particularly for this meeting. So these are the list you can see here. Right. So this, this is an opportunity. The Y20 meeting is an opportunity for the youth of the city to voice their opinions that will be forecasted or that will be broadcasted to the worldwide audience. All right. So therefore, it is beneficial. Okay. Then coming to the next news, we have this news from Arunachal, taken from Assam Tribune. So the Arunachal Pradesh government has decided to increase the upper age limit for the civil service examination of the states. So now the age limit has gone up to 35 for general candidates and 40 years for scheduled tribe candidates. Right, so this will amend the rule three of our natural civil services and civil post upper age limit for direct recruitment rules. Okay, previously the maximum age or the upper age limit was uh, limited at 32 years with five years relaxation for scheduled tribe candidates. So now it has gone up to maximum of 40. Okay, in the next news, we have this news from Mizoram, taken again from Assam Tribune. So Mizoram Assembly has decided to pass resolution against Uniform Civil Code. Now to, to talk about the Uniform Civil Code, it is a means or a law that is being framed by the government of India that all sections of the society, irrespective or of their religion, shall be treated equally according to a national civil code which shall be applicable to all in uniform manner so this covers areas like marriage divorce maintenance inheritance adoption and succession of the property right so all these areas will be under a national civil code that will be equal for all the citizens of all the religions now the contention from the Mizoram part has been uh, particularly due to the fear that this uniform civil code will infringe on the rights of customary laws and practices of minority communities in the country right and this is this resolution against uniform civil code is not exactly correct or not exactly wrong as well you can say so if we keep an open mind to think about in india we have so much of diversity and every community has their own system of laws practices that involve family and property now when all these practices will come under a law a uniform law that will hamper the minorities who are already a minority in terms of definition the, particularly the ST communities, the scheduled tribe communities. So that will feel like an infringement of the majority into their customary laws. So let's not go deep into that, but let's just understand the fear why there is a re resolution against uniform civil code. So we hope that in the future, the government of India will bring certain policies or laws that will bridge this fear into something better okay then from the next news we have this news that says hackers stole 3.8 billion dollars from crypto investors in 2022 making it the worst year for crypto investors now we know about cryptocurrency that has been going all around the world 
and a lot of new generation is investing into cryptocurrency and and a lot of them have benefited out of it but october last year was the worst or the single month where a lot of cryptocurrencies were stolen or hacked and mostly they were hacked by north korea linked hackers which makes the prospect of investing in cryptocurrency a very very dangerous situation so this can cause a lot of problems so how do they hack how do how did this hackers hack by this concept called cross bridging now cross bridging is something like let's just take for an example we have two chains right we have two chains let's just understand uh, so if we draw two chains in the board here so you can see so let's just suppose in the first chain we invested this much and in the second chain also we will mint the same amount of the first chain now when we we'll replicate that the first one is locked right the first one is locked till there is an equivalent in the second chain so this allows users to mint in another blockchain right but hackers have used this flaw a little bit of flaw in the system to divert, divert the minting into their own accounts and particularly if from the news as we can see it has been mostly linked towards north korean hackers so the prospect of this amount of cryptos going into this hackers hand will definitely have a dangerous impact in the world particularly this currency will be used in funding nuclear weapon programs which is which itself is a very dangerous proposition then in the next news we have indian railways to introduce bharat gaurav deluxe ac tourist train under ek bharat shrestha bharat scheme now ek bharat shrestha bharat scheme is a scheme to showcase the heritage of india implemented by government of india via ministry of tourism so this train will be the first uh, uh, it will have certain amount of facilities like four ac coaches right then two second ac coaches and pantries and rail restaurants so this train will be started from gurugram yeah there is an option to deboard and board the station at particular uh, board a train or deboard a train at particular stations like such as this and it will go through um, various portions of gujarat particularly this has been in line to showcase the heritage of gujarat so you can see the statue of unity then all these places right so there is an option to deboard at or board at gurugram so basically it'll start from gurugram then go through jaipur or rajasthan and then enter gujarat right so this is under the initiative called dekho apna desh particularly for domestic tourists for and that will be the train will travel at, at least 3500 kilometers for 8 days of journey and the prices are set here the prices are this for second ac tire then 60 6 approximately 67000 for this class you can see the list the price list here have underlined here okay now to make this to make this journey affordable for middle class there is an option of emi payments in small amounts okay which will be available in the irctc 
website so you can book if you're planning to visit Gujarat and see the Statue of Unity and all these places you can directly book tickets for this train via the IRCTC website okay the final news is on India Energy 2023 that has already been launched in Bangalore, Karnataka by the Prime Minister, right? So this is the 2023 edition. We have already briefly discussed about this in our previous news analysis. Again, for you to go back to our previous news analysis. So there has been multiple initiatives that will be launched in the field of green energy and party fuel that will be launched in 84 retail outlets in oil marketing companies of 11 states and union territories, right? And there is this rally, green mobility rally, to create awareness for clean fuels and also Indian oil's indoor cooking system that has been dedicated in this energy week, all right? So this brings us to the end of today's news analysis. We hope you are enjoying this series. Do comment down below if you have any queries or doubts regarding the series or regarding any courses that we are providing on our YouTube platform. You can definitely get a reply from us. All right, so that's the end of the news analysis. We'll see you soon.